Welcome to Phone Mart. How may I help you? iPhone 4. Where is the iPhone 4? I need an iPhone 4. I'm never going to try to do 50 deadlifts at 200 pounds when I want to throw up ever again. Today, we're going to fix a MacBook. We get a green light and no fan spin. So if we have a green light but we don't have fan spin, what power rail is it that we already know must be present on this MacBook? Nasera wins with the first answer. PP3V42, indeed. So, we are going to go down the list of power rails on this MacBook and try and figure out which one's missing. Let's open up a schematic and a board view for the 820-3437 and fix this board before I pass out. In the board view here, we have a list of power rails. So the first rail that we're going to check for is our PP bus. Let's see if our PP bus is G3 hot or sick. Here we go. We have 8.6 volts on PP bus. PPVRTC is present. Now we check to see if PPF5ES5 is present. PP5ES5 is present. Now we're going to check and see if PP5ES4 is present. PP5ES4 is not present. So it seems that PP5ES4 is the rail that's not present. So what would we do next? So a power rail is missing. PP5E S4RS3. What do we do at this point? Where do we go? What we're going to do is we're going to find the chip that creates this rail and then take a look around it a little bit. So let's take a look around the board to see where PP5E S4RS3 is created. Now the first thing is when we look around the board, we're going to see a lot of different PP5E S4RS3s. We're not looking for where PP5E S4 is going into something. We're looking for it coming out of something. So we're not looking for the mouth, we're looking for the asshole, if that makes any sense. So this is PP5ES4 going in to the camera. That is the mouth, not what we're looking for. This is PP5ES4 RS3 going in to a USB port power switch. See how PP5ES4 RS3 is here, and it says in? That's the mouth, not what we're looking for. Over here, PP5ES4RS3 is going into the speaker amplifier. Not it. Next, we're going to click it again. This is where PP5ES4RS3 is going into the DC inboard. Next, this is where PP5ES4RS3 is going into U7501. Again, that's the mouth. We're not looking for the mouth. We're looking for the asshole. And here, check this out. It says PP5ES4RS3 output. So this is not the input, the mouth. This is the output, the asshole. Meaning that U7501 is responsible for creating PP5ES4RS3. Something that has confused a lot of the students that I had when I'm sitting in front of them and they're trying to figure out how to troubleshoot this stuff is they cannot tell when a signal is going into a chip versus coming out of it. They don't know how to look that up. So when I say find me where this rail is created, they skip over the chip because they can't tell which it is. They can't tell the mouth from the asshole. And it's important to tell the mouth from the asshole because there's clear differences between the two. So, if we go back over here, now we're going to look to see if the issue is with the chip or with another part of the machine. This chip is going to create that, but we want to figure out whose fault it is. So there's several things that can keep a power rail from being created. So it could be chip is not being enabled, chip is broken, chip does not have input voltage, output has a short circuit. So the first thing we're going to do is check and see if the chip has a short circuit. And to do that, we must unplug the charger. So I'm going to check on the pin for PP5ES4RS3. Turn on the multimeter on the screen. And as can be seen here, we have 4 point something million ohms to ground. That's not a short circuit. So we don't have a short circuit to ground on PP5ES4RS3. PP5ES4RS3 is 4 million ohms. Next up, we're going to see if the voltage is coming into the chip on pin 23. 8.6 volts. So we have input coming into the chip. We have no short circuit to ground. Now the last thing to check to determine whether or not we blame something else on the board of the chip is the enable. Let's see if the enable is present. If the enable is present, the issue is likely the chip and it'll be a simple, easy board. If the enable is not present, that means PM Sleep S4L is missing and this board is going to go to somebody else who's about to start feeling a lot more sick.
Okay, fine. By the way, everybody, take a look at Paul's RGB. Isn't it pretty? Paul has RGB. Looking at this is very good for my stomach. I love it. This is also unique in that every time it makes a different color, the controller makes a different squeaking noise. Yes. <laughs> but we do have RGB at the store now. So let's check the enable for PP5 VS4 and see what we get on this board. We have nothing at the enable. 0.1 millivolts, which means that we cannot blame the chip because every condition is correct for it to turn on if it was being asked to turn on. We have input voltage. We have no short on output. So P5VS4, whatever the hell, enable over here. We're going to right-click that. And that goes to this resistor. That resistor goes to this on this side. That resistor is going to go to this area. That's going to come from PM Sleep S4L, if you follow this little rabbit hole up here. And PM Sleep S4L comes straight from your CPU. One of our favorite signals. There's no signal that we like better than PM Sleep S4L. Paul said he just started feeling sick. Yes, this signal crushes technicians, even the best of them. So let's take a look at why it is this signal is such a crushing dis destruction of confidence. This signal comes here from the PCH, the Platform Controller Hub. That's kind of like a North Bridge and a South Bridge all in one on newer Intel platforms. Now, on this machine, the PCH is built into the CPU, meaning that signal comes directly from the CPU. Now, a couple of things have to be present in order for this to come from the CPU. The first is some signals on the left have to be here. You may notice a pattern where all the left sir signals are ins, and all the right signals are outs. You need to have your ins to get your outs. The second thing that must be occurring is the CPU must be communicating with the SPI ROM, or if you come from PC land, you most likely know that as the BIOS chip. If it's not communicating with the BIOS, the SPI ROM, then it's not going to create the signals required to turn on the power rails. The third thing that must be present is a lack of shorts. If there are short circuits present, that signal will show up for teeny tiny hundredth of a millisecond and then go away. Let's so at this point, the thing to do is really just to look over the board. Because again, since this could be literally anything, broken p traces inside the board, bad CPU, bad BIOS, missing BIOS, BIOS traces missing, short circuit on any rail. It's a nightmare. It's a completely open-ended challenge. So we are going to take a look over the board and see if there's a hint. Because if there's not a hint, that's easily visible. Then this is the type of board that we would throw in Paul's status. Hmm. Warm. Oh. Jackpot. Imagine that. One simple probe point missing for the BIOS. So this is a probe point whereby some resistors by the BIOS that connect to the BIOS will communicate with a resistor under here. And this resistor goes to the CPU. So check this out. This resistor is going to go to a signal that goes to the CPU, and the other end of that resistor is going to go to a signal that goes to the BIOS chip. So if we just flip this back over, that's going to the CPU. This side of the resistor is going up here, and that hole is going to this resistor. That resistor goes to the BIOS chip. So let's see what happens if we rework that area. Now the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can find a probe point. I can find the nub inside there. Now the last time I tried to find the nub, I shorted my backlight circuit to ground. Because I am a nub. But let's see if we can do a halfway decent job this time. We're not promising anything here. 
it's okay. Let's do some scrapey scraping. I'm glad I just wiped my hands off with some alcohol. This is a beautiful blade. There's nothing wrong with this blade. T TCRS says, can I come to New York for a week and fix SBI termini traces, termination traces, and clock chips? Sure. We don't have anybody here for all that easy stuff to go to. Okay, I think we're about to get to the nub. Ask him if he wants to do the Zalmo. Tim, we have a couple of CPU replacements to do with the Zalmo. Paul's not being a good sport about it. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to use a Q-tip and a little bit of alcohol to dig in there and really clean up all those little bits that are going to make it hard to put a wire there. Now, one of the most satisfying things to watch is 99% alcohol evaporate on its own. Isn't that nice? TeamViewer has alerted me that my laptop at home is just signed in, meaning that Mr. Clinton just jumped on my keyboard. Because when I left home, it was asleep. Good job, Mr. Clinton. Okay, at this point, that's fairly clean. So I'm going to have to get a micro pencil tip in order to run a teeny tiny jumper wire. So I'm just going to hold the iron there to melt away the alcohol. And now the, I think the alcohol is absorbing the light. So let me just change the exposure on my camera there a little bit. There we go. So the heat from the iron has kind of melted all the alcohol off. You know, evaporated all the alcohol away. So now we're going to put a tiny bit of flux here, just a small amount, like that. And we're going to take some solder. And we're going to tin those, the, the nub, as well as tin the trace. Now we have to run a wire there. So I'm going to use a little bit more flux in that area. Teeny tiny bit more. We are out of stock of flux at the moment, and my tube is just about out. So I'm going to have to be a little conservative today. It's normal for us to go through about 30,000 cc's every month or two here. Much flux for much repairing. All right, so I want to scrape away all of the insulation from the wire. Now we got it onto the large part, which is the easy part. Now we're going to try to get it onto the nub. much hard. This is one of the most satisfying MacBook Air repairs. And I start diagnosing MacBooks with just a magnifying glass and an amp meter. You can start diagnosing MacBooks with nothing but your brain and your eyes, really. Oh, 
Those are going to be the two most important tools. All right. Now let's see how this MacBook works. Let's see if we get a fan spin. We still have no fan spin. Well, isn't that sad? Let's take a look around the rest of this MacBook. Missing PM Sleep S4L. I do want to throw it in the trash. It's tempting. Huh. First thing is that the resistor looks a little corroded. Let's see if it matters or not. Hmm. This resistor is burned. We're getting 3.3 on one side and 0 0.7 on the other. This resistor that seems a little corroded is a pull-up resistor between the 3.3 volt power line and SPI ROM use MLB, which is a reset signal. So I'm guessing that this thing is going to be reset without that being present. As you can see, this area doesn't look very nice, and neither does that resistor. We're going to repeal that resistor and replace it with a better one. And this MacBook's going to feel much better inside. It's going to be a happy, healthy little MacBook. iPhone 4. I want an iPhone 4. iPhone 4. Where is my iPhone 4? As you can see, we have achieved fan spin, which means everything in this MacBook works A-OK. -okay. Quality assurance testing complete. So this MacBook was missing a power rail. It was missing PP5VS4 RS3. It was missing PP5V RS3 because of a missing enable. That missing enable came from the CPU, PM Sleep S4L. The enable was missing because the CPU was not creating it since it was not able to speak to the SPI ROM, otherwise known as the BIOS, as a result of a missing probe point. And also the BIOS was stuck since a pull-up resistor for a signal called SPI ROM use MULB was not there because of a corroded resistor. After fixing it, we now have the beautiful sounds of fan spin. Hear that, folks? That's the sound of a perfectly functioning MacBook. And that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Godspeed, Lewis. Your channel is any way to pay for both my ThinkPad T580. I've repaired many MacBooks with your knowledge. Awesome. That sounds very cool. I'm glad to hear it. I also want an iPhone 4. Don't even get me started with that shit. Where is my iPhone 4? I want an iPhone 4. Get the fuck out of my store.